rising majestically to an awe-inspiring height and stretching up to nearly three miles from the ocean. Cloaked in mystery and intrigue since its first discovery, for generations, these colossal sediment mountains lay dormant, seemingly unremarkable until the revelation from space where the scars of our planet began to unravel. Chevron deposits have intrigued geologists for over a century, capturing the imaginations of scientists and laypeople alike. These enigmatic geological formations consist of V-shaped sediment layers that have been deposited on shorelines by massive flood events, sparking questions about their origins and the cataclysmic events that formed them. The most famous location for chevron deposits is the island of Madagascar, where massive and distinct chevrons have been unearthed. These deposits, known as the Fenambosi Chevron, rise to an impressive height of 600 feet and stretch nearly five miles from the ocean. Research published in the scientific journal The Holocene suggests that the deposits at Fenambosi were formed because of a massive flood event that took place approximately 8,000 years ago. As the floodwaters recede, they leave behind distinct sediment layers that form the shape of chevrons, hence the name. The study used optically stimulated luminescence dating on the deposits to determine their age, finding that they were formed by a single flood event that lasted for several days. The study also noted that the deposits were found at an elevation of 70 meters above sea level, indicating that the flood waters were much higher than they are today. But Madagascar is not the only location where chevron deposits have been found. Mozambique, Brazil, Venezuela. In Australia's Pilbara region, Chevron deposits have also been unearthed, believed to have been formed by a flood that occurred around 12,000 years ago. According to a study published in the journal Quaternary Science Reviews, these chevron deposits were likely caused by a massive flood that had a significant impact on the landscape and may have played a role in the extinction of several species of megafauna in the area. Deep in the Rub al Khali Desert in the Arabian Peninsula, chevron deposits have also been found. An article published in the Quaternary Research Journal suggests the deposits were likely formed by a massive flood event that occurred approximately 10,000 years ago. The South American continent is also home to several chevron deposits, including the Parana Basin in Brazil, and on the coast of southern Peru where they are believed to be around 3,600 years old. Chevron deposits are scattered throughout the globe, an undeniable truth that can be effortlessly verified by perusing Google Earth and scouring the coastlines of our planet. The deposits around the globe reach heights of more than 100 meters with inland penetration of up to 10 kilometers, riding over rocky, raised shorelines or low-laying beach. One may wonder if there is any shoreline that has not experienced the enigmatic formation of these geological wonders, but the answer is simply that most of them have been erased from sight by the ever-expanding footprints of human civilization. But how were they formed? And why? Despite their popularity in the scientific community, the formation of chevron deposits remains a topic of debate. Many scientists in this field attribute the cause to a comet impact. Specifically, regarding the Madagascar deposit, scientists often point to the Burkle Crater about 1,500 kilometers southeast of the island, while the most popular theory attributes their creation to a catastrophic tsunami that struck the Indian Ocean roughly 5,000 years ago, sediment and fossil analysis of the deposits does not perfectly align with the estimated impact crater located under the ocean. The tsunami hypothesis is a plausible explanation, but it falls short under careful examination. There are two significant pieces of evidence that discredit the theory of a tsunami being the primary cause of Chevron deposits creation. 
As a tsunami approaches the shore, the wave becomes more or less parallel to the shoreline and it will wash straight in. The issue is that each chevron formation observed is angled away from the shore. Asteroid-causing tsunamis being another potential cause given by geologists also falls short. Scientists have created computer models of asteroid impacts like the one at Burkle Crater to see how mega-tsunamis would behave as they approach the coast and transport sediment. In these models, the waves generated by the theoretical impact spread out in a circular fashion as you might expect until they reached shallower waters where they refract against the sea floor. The waves, bearing the sediment load that would ultimately form the chevrons, then became parallel to the shoreline. An orientation inconsistent to the chevron's actual orientation. Secondly, the obvious reason why a tsunami is not the cause of chevron deposits formation is because they exist globally. This trend of uniformitarianism in geology tries to explain every event with a contained explanation, ignoring the obvious truth that everything is interconnected. It is time to consider a broader perspective that includes the interrelatedness of these events, instead of trying to explain away each event with its own independent explanation. Chevron deposits are a testament to the violent forces that have shaped our planet, and there is only one violent force that can unify the evidences and explanations. Earth crust displacement. The shifting of the terrestrial poles. Earth crust displacement suggests that the Earth's crust can shift and that the lithosphere, or the outermost layer of the Earth's crust, can move independently from the mantle. This movement can cause a rapid shift in the position of the Earth's poles or the tilting of the planet's axis, leading to changes in climate and environmental conditions. If the Earth's crust shifted rapidly, it could cause large volumes of water to slosh over the continents, resulting in catastrophic flooding. The angle of the chevron deposits can be explained by the rapid crust displacement, as the crust could move in any direction not in relation to water. The onslaught of water would carve the land in its retreat, leaving the formations, sediments, and any marine life in its wake. In Madagascar, researchers found significant portions of carbonate tests resembling shells of marine foraminifera, including some that are partially dolomitized and some that are infilled with mud. This means that the tiny fossils they found have been partially mineralized and suggests the origins are from the continental shelf and not windblown from beaches. Skeptics who dismiss any type of theory where ocean water was the primary agent in carving the structures have suggested that wind blew microfossils inland, which is absurd to say the least. They would have disintegrated before they even landed. Often chevron deposits occur over shorelines that are not beach by nature, but rocky and elevated. The water was still able to easily pass over ridges, carve out land and leave behind the familiar patterns we see. Another computer model created to show how tsunamis could not have caused the deposits suggests that the chevrons are made up of ripples and dunes, evidence of a certain kind of sediment transport called bed load, in which the grains bounce along the sediment bed until they finally come to rest. Less powerful water flows or winds would carry sediments as bed load but a giant, powerful wave would be able to fully suspend sediment grains of many sizes, carrying them far across the shoreline until they are finally deposited, forming a sheet of sand rather than dunes. The ocean does not move towards the land like a tsunami during the hours of a pole shift, but rather the entire ocean is reacting to the movement of the continental shelves and to the slowing of and eventual stoppage of the Earth's rotation. The centrifugal force and movement of the Earth creates a bulge along the equator of our planet, and thus as the center has more girth, the poles are flatter. This is known as an oblate spheroid, 
So when the Earth comes to a temporary halt in its rotation, the ocean water, which is confined to the equatorial bulge through centrifugal force, will need to escape, and in doing so, it will push water towards the poles and over land masses, causing massive floods. This is not the same mechanics, or the same type of force that a tsunami generates. It's not so much of an onslaught, but rather a reaction, though deadly nonetheless. The Chevron deposits are living examples of the direction of previous crust movements, and this is why they are a global phenomenon. Emanuel Velikovsky, in his monumental and important book, Earth and Upheaval, writes, The displacement of the Earth's crust can also cause the sea to move over the continents, and this would account for many anomalies of sedimentation and for the presence of marine fossils on the tops of mountains. In this way, the world ocean, which in antiquity was given the name of Oceanus, invaded the continents. Chevron deposits are a fascinating geological enigma that has puzzled scientists for decades, invoking various theories on their formation. If one were to attribute these formations solely to tsunamis, then we must also account for their global distribution, the lack of opposing continents with Chevron deposits, and the absence of cultural records that document events specific to their case. But instead, we have a deep and interconnected web of cultural mythology that all share similar experiences with regards to the Earth's violent past. Earth crust displacement provides a comprehensive explanation that ties it all together, unifying this geological puzzle into a coherent and awe-inspiring picture of our planet's catastrophic past. I encourage you to pick up Google Earth and start scanning the coastlines. You will be amazed. Thanks for watching everyone, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.